Perhaps if I unmute my sound, doesn't it? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, good morning. Good morning. I actually remembered it was Thursday this week, so we're all good. No last minute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, I hope you're well. Morning, Cara. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Angela. Yeah. This is becoming a habit. I like it. <laughs> okay, so good morning. I've got something to kneel on this morning. And I've got a couple of larger, larger blocks today. And um, we're actually going to start in a seat sitting up in a nice ele elevation. So somewhere that you can feel like your hips are nice and comfortable. Okay. I'm just going to pop two bricks. <clears throat> and then sit bones nice and easy on the blocks. And we're actually going to start with a little bit of breath work this morning. So for our practice today, Thursday is much more, much more gentle. We're going to be moving our body and just stretching little bits here and there. And also really trying to connect in with ourselves. It's so important um, that we can take some time to, you know, just notice what's going on and analysing things sometimes. Um, and just letting that breath just come and go and just trying to just switch, switch your mind off. So on Tuesday, we looked at um, sort of connecting the mind and body together with sort of flow. And we're gonna do a little bit of a similar thing this morning, but just being very still. Okay, so when I say very still, we are gonna be moving in asanas, but much more um, slow paced. So all I want you to do is just make sure that you are nice and comfortable. Um, I actually like to quite like tuck, tuck my foot in because it keeps my foot warm. Yeah, so um, just sit however you feel feel comfortable and you can either have your palms down or palms up. You can make a mundra with your fingers if you have that in your practice, um, hands in your lap. And we're just going to imagine that we are hanging by a string on the crown of our head. So we can feel that the crown of our head is just lifting up to the sky. And we're creating space in every single one of our, our vertebrae. And we're also keeping our sit bones nice and rooted into the blocks or the pillow, bolster, whatever you're using. So we are looking to have no discomfort in the hips. So you can really think about how the breath is coming and going without any distraction from discomfort. So begin your ujjayi breath, just inhaling through the nose and exhaling out through the nose. Your eyes can be closed or just a gentle, soft focus. Just feeling the breath coming into your body, moving in, down to your belly. You know, really trying to inflate that diaphragm, inflate into the ribs and inflate into the chest. Just let everything blow up just like it's a balloon. And then exhaling when you're ready, just your own breath pattern. And it's almost like you are trying to steam up a mirror out through an invisible hole in your throat. So with our ujjayi breath, we can think about only nasal breathing, but we imagine that we are standing in front of a mirror. We're trying to blow out that air hole in our, in our throat by our Adam's apple. That will give you that, that sensation of a really nice, deep, deep exhale. And almost like that snoring sound from your throat. 
So you dry breath is very audible. And you can use it to, you know, actually listen to the sound of your breath. Sometimes you can feel the breath moving over the top lip as you exhale. And it goes without saying, if you are nasally blocked, then use your mouth. And a little bit of counting box breath. So we're actually going to be retaining uh, the breath this morning for a count of four. So I'm going to give you a visualization of a box and four sides to the box. So four inhales, four holds, four exhales, four holds, four inhales. OK, so just taking a breath in. Taking a breath out and then inhaling for four. Hold. Exhaling for four. Hold. Inhale four. Hold. Exhale four. Hold, inhale four, hold, exhale four, hold, inhale four, hold, exhale four, hold, last round, inhale four. Hold, exhale four, hold, inhale four, hold, and then take your breath back to normal. If your eyes are closed, maybe you keep them closed and just bring yourself almost to be aware of any sensations your body's given you. And bring the hands in front of you and just start to bring some gentle movements into the wrist. Now, please feel free to carry on with that uh, box breathing if you if you want to. Yeah, just um, it might be quite a lot to think about while you're moving as well. Otherwise, we're just going to stick to that huge eye breath. So really focusing on breath and sensations of body. And then just inhale, bring your arms all the way up. Reaching nice and high and exhaling them, bringing them down to your chest. And I just want you to say thank you to yourself. OK, and then inhale, come up. Often we don't give ourselves enough thanks. So every time we come down, we're going to say thank you to ourselves. Yep, inhale up. Exhale down and thank you. It could be for arriving on your mat. It could be for being kind to yourself. It could be. It could be just giving yourself a little bit of gratitude and the more that we can bring those nice feelings in about ourselves, um, the better we feel about ourselves and the better we feel about others. So let's come up and reach those arms all the way up now and stretch as high as you can and take the eye gaze and just look up to the fingers. So really pulling out of those sit bones. A couple of breaths here. And then give yourself a hug. So you're going to reach your hands around your back and walk your fingers around as much as you can and give yourself a hug and just um, rock from side to side. There's loads of studies to say that having hugs can, you know, make you feel really good. Um, so again, what better way to, than to give yourself a hug? Yeah, if you've got no one there to do it for you. And then inhale, reach those arms wide and cross the other way. Yeah, and then moving a little bit, wiggling that body from side to side, really feeling that nice feeling from that tightness of a hug. Releasing the hands and then just uncrossing the legs and taking your um, prop, whatever you're using 
away. And if you would like a kneeling pad, just bringing yourself onto a kneeling pad. And we're just going to have a go at sitting back on the, on the heels. If this doesn't work, then just um, stay in a high nail position. And then reach one arm up. Reach one arm up. And then side bend over. And this top arm, we're going to take a look at the fingers and just circling the arm in nice big circles, really nice and slow, reaching over and behind, following our eye gaze with it. So try and inhale when we come up and exhale when we come round. And then start to move the body with it. it start to feel like there's a little bit of a rotation round from the ribs, really beginning to stretch up and over reaching the fingers further and further away each time, further behind you each time, just getting around into that chest. And then coming all the way up. And we're going to bring the ear to the shoulder. So the arm that you've just been moving, you'll be coming away from that, away from that shoulder. And just getting a nice stretch into the neck and be mindful. You may want to just move your head from side to side a little bit. And then we're going to just turn the hand up and down. Yeah, so just feeling that real nice opening and holding wherever feels you want to, feel you want to. And then nice and slowly release. We do exactly the same thing on the other side. So we inhale to reach the arm up. We come over. We have a nice big stretch through that side. And we look up towards the fingers. And then start to circle that arm around. So it's really nice and nice and moving in the, in the ball and socket joint. Just being really mindful to inhale when we come up. And then exhale, arm come down. So inhale, inhale, arm up. Following the eye gaze to the fingers. Making that circle nice and big. And then bringing the body in as well. So we come over and round and we sort of stretch those fingers as far as we can out from the side of the hip. Just pushing that hip around away from you. Nice big circles. Nice big circles and a few more. Just listening out for Anything that doesn't feel good. And then coming up to that seat. So we come away from that shoulder and just drawing into the neck. And then being mindful with this hand, just moving, moving the neck if it feels okay. And just playing with the, the limbs. Listening to the breath. And sort of finding what works for you the best. Exploring your muscles, exploring your body. And then slowly coming all the way up. We're just going to take um, a quick down dog to stretch out the back of the legs. And just open up the back body slightly. So nice and slowly when you're ready. Just going to bring ourselves up to that down dog position. Just stretching out through the back of the legs, lengthening out through the back of the body. And drawing the shoulders down your back. Not being worried if your heels touch the floor or they don't, but thinking about a nice straight line from shoulders to pelvis, to tailbone. Just drawing your rib cage in, slight bit of abdominal activity. Maybe you just practice a little bit of your box breath here. So four and a hold, four and a hold. I'll just continue with a couple of rounds of Ujjayi breath. Mm. 
One more round of whatever breath pattern you're doing. And then just bring your knees down to the mat. I'm gonna turn sideways on. And hands and knees, so full point kneeling. And then just stretching one leg out to the side. If you don't have much room, you might need to come long ways on your mat like I just have. Yep. So just stretching that foot out to the side, just turning it in and then rocking a little tiny bit forwards and backwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then drawing that knee in other side. So bringing the foot out and just rocking forwards and backwards, using something to protect your knees if you need it. Just try and keep your toes so they're facing the front. Just gentle opening through the hips. Nice gentle movements. And then both knees back to the center and take a child's pose. So if you've moved, you're gonna to need to move back round to long ways on your mat. Taking a child's pose. And letting your bottom sink back towards your heels. Just lengthening out your spine, walking those fingertips away. Then open your hands so they're shoulder width. And inhaling, bringing yourself up to a full point kneeling position and just moving one knee back slightly, the other knee back slightly so that you can keep your elbows in tight and just lower yourself down to the mat. Legs nice and long, inhaling into a little baby cobra. We're just pulling those elbows in and have a little rock from side to side here. Little rock, just moving the upper body, moving the shoulders. And then planting the elbows on the mat in front of you. And that could be a long way in front of you, or it could be underneath your shoulders. Yep, yeah, so however that, that feels for you, you might be a long way in front and just head hovering off the floor. Or you may be up a little bit higher just not forcing anything, but just feeling the sensation of pulling in. You're drawing the shoulders down the back. Got that invisible string on the crown of the head, but this time it's going up to 45 degrees rather than the ceiling. So think of length through the back of the spine. And then just exhaling, letting yourself come back down. Hands go inside your shoulders and then just push yourself back up. And it's as though you're going to go back into a child's pose, but you're not. So you're further back than a four point kneeling position, but you're not in a child's pose. And then round and tuck your pelvis as though you are in a cat cow. But like I say, you're in this sort of midpoint between a, between a box shape and a child's pose. And walk those fingers away. This is really going to get into your low part of the back as we cat and cow the spine here. Yeah, so when you um, come into that cat position, just exhale, draw those hip bones in together and really feel that moving into the low part of your back. It's as though you're just doing a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Feeling really nice through the through the back, you can walk the fingers away so you get more stretch underneath your arms, down your side body. And then we're just gonna take a very quick down dog again. Just one round of breath here, just to stretch out a little bit of relief from the knees. And then coming back down, and we are all going to turn long ways on our mat now. And I suggest you have a kneeling pad. 
underneath. We'll go left knee. So you need space um, on the right side of your mat. So we're going to be taking that leg out. Yeah, so just like we did before. So I'm more over to the left side of my mat. So mirroring you, that would be your right. Yeah, and then taking the right leg out. So that could be your left if you're mirroring me. And then inhale up and reach the arms up. Now this leg that's out to the side, we're gonna have the foot so it faces the front. If anything, a little bit turned in. Yeah, and I'd like you to try and get the knife edge of the foot down on the mat. So you're really gonna try and stretch out and start to feel it in that inner thigh. Reaching up with those hands. And that's it, growing tall through those fingers, really pull out from that hip. And then just move your pelvis forwards and backwards. Yeah, so you're just going to do a little bit of almost like a sort of butt wink. Yeah. OK, so pushing backwards and pushing under and feel the sensations that you may get in that inner thigh. Maybe you get something at the front of your hip. And then we're going to go side to side with the pelvis. So side to side, moving it that way, moving it that way, and then feeling how that again, changes the stretch in that inner thigh. Reaching the arms wide, and we're gonna come over, reaching up and over. You can slide the hand down the leg. You may be able to reach the mat, okay? And reach up, nice big side bend and push through that foot. So that long leg, you're gonna push through it, really reaching up through the sides. And then slowly we're going to come up and go the other way. That's it. So reach, don't put pressure on this knee, please. Slide the hand down. If you need support, you're going to use a block, okay, just behind the knee. So it's fine to have a hand on the leg as long as you're not pushing down. So really reach up and look up towards that top arm. One more each way. So a nice big reach, grow tall all the way when we come through that center reach up and over try and push your hips under and forwards and feel that real nice stretch through the side and then inhaling up reaching up over and reaching up and out through that other side and maybe this time you look up towards the armpit up towards the hand the cupped hand Now, windmill yourself around so we come to the front of our mat. So you're just going to take yourself around, lift up your knees rather than pivot on them, and have a high kneeling position. So quite a lot of kneeling today, so please take the time to pad out your knees. Toes are tucked if you can, and then bringing the hands into the low part of the back, just drawing the navel to the spine and pulling the elbows back. We're just trying to open up that front body, open up the chest. And then take the eye gaze up to the corner of the ceiling. So I always try and use the corner of the ceiling rather than up. Just to encourage you to lengthen out through the back of the neck rather than compress it. And then reaching those arms all the way up and Chucking your toes so you're on the tops of your feet and sitting backwards on your heels. If this is too strong, take your legs out in front. I'm just going to add a quick twist. So just twisting around one way. And then twisting around the other way. Got one more each side. And that's it. So doing whatever you feel you want to do with your legs. Just rotating that spine. Thinking about it coming from the upper, you know, more the upper part of the back. And then we're going to change that pose to the other side. So that gate pose. So you'll be more over to the right edge of your mat. And I suggest you use a, a kneeling pad. 
So you want the heel to be in line with the knee. And then coming up and reaching those arms up nice and high to the ceiling. You can palm to palm or you can interlink. And then just move your pelvis forwards and backwards. So finding um, maybe exploring what you feel in this inner thigh. Maybe you start to get a stretch in the front of the hip or even in the hamstring, maybe a little bit when you're coming backwards. Yeah, it might sort of get you around your groin, possibly. Of this straight leg. Okay, then we're going side to side. So when you bump your hips away from that leg, this is where you're going to feel it increase around the, around the thigh. Yep, so just play with that position. Just moving, being mindful of your pelvis. Not forcing anything, just working with your breath. And then inhaling to reach your arms nice and wide. And we go up and over. Yeah, so up and over. Maybe the fingers touch the floor, you might use a prop. Just check the toes are turned in and you're on the knife edge of that foot. So you're really wrapping that foot round to the mat. Then inhaling up and over the other side. Remember, no pressure on this knee. Yeah, so use a block if you feel like you need a bit more stability. And up and over. So maybe this time the hand goes down. So really stretch out through that side body. And then last one up and over the other side. And this time we're going to try and take that eye gaze up and either look towards the cup hand towards the elbow, towards the armpit, wherever you can. Remembering there's no pressure on this long leg. And then very slowly coming out. If you're on a kneeling pad and you've got room, you might just be able to bring that foot round or you may need to turn long ways. So we're gonna come back to that stretch, open up the front body, so bring the hands, Small part of the back, thumbs out, elbows in. And this time we'll add a little bit more of a, of a sort of back bend, but make sure you're nice and safe and you're supporting that low back. You're drawing your navel in and then lengthen up. So pull those elbows in behind you. Draw that tailbone under. Open up that front body. And then nice and slowly, supporting the low back, coming out, maneuvering yourself around, and then find your relaxation position. So you can come down to Shavasana on your mat. You can stay in a high seat, in that meditation seat. So completely up to you. And I'm going to be quite silent today. I'd like you to just practice your breath. And maybe you do the box. Maybe you do the Ujjayi breath. And I'm actually going to slope off today without really saying goodbye. Because I would like you to actually try and stay for longer today and maybe you can do five or ten minutes even if it's two minutes extra to really work on that breath technique and just being still <laughs> 